thing that we need to consider is the importance of cultural diversity and how curriculum deals with it, the relationship between diversity and curriculum. Everyone wants to be included. I mean, do you want to go to a function where you, uh, people of your type, whatever type you are, are marginalized? For example, would you want to be the only Chelsea fan sitting in a club where everybody else is a Manchester or MU supporter? You don't want to be excluded. So the curriculum has to intentionally be constructed in a manner where every member of the society feels that they are they can take ownership of the curriculum and so therefore they will participate the curriculum or in the curriculum in a meaningful way. To further elaborate on this notion, one would say that society is increasing, increasingly becoming diverse, particularly in urban Malaysia, where society is becoming multicultural, multi-ethnic and multi-religious. Although they, we have a very strong uh, presence of Islam in our community, but you will find pockets where more and more interfaith uh, communication, interfaith families are coming together. So their perception of society changes. They are, so therefore, how does curriculum incorporate all this? So as Austin and Huxin in 1998 uh, wrote a very profound statement, the comp particularly they are reflecting from an American perspective, the complexation in our students changing from one color to various shades of color. And this adding of color and cultural diversity will continue into the, continue into the foreseeable future. According to Austin and uh, Hans uh, Hanskin, which is in one of our prescribed texts, the complexion of our students is changing from the one color to various shades of color. And this adding of color and cultural diversity will continue into the foreseeable future. As the world moves towards becoming a global village, society will become even more diverse and people bringing in new values, new language and new way of life. Addressing diversity and curriculum will continue to be a challenge for educators. It is this task that will time will all times be politically sensitive. One concept that has in uh, one concept that has interested educators is assimilation and integration of diverse group. So I remember when I was in the States as a student, people were talking about melting pot, where uh, the whole idea was to to assimilate and integrate. <clears throat> so the issue was if Malaysia had to move forward, would we all want to become a single race? But the idea of becoming single race sounds very romantic and idealistic. Now, can we, by we becoming a single race, obviously there is an advantage to it. But one would argue there is also the disadvantage to it in the sense that you have to give up your existing identity to adopt and assimilate a new identity. So in the process you have to transform and become something else. Now the something else may not become like somebody else. The something else it become it could be an aggregate of values to adapt a value aggregate of this of the community's value. So the alternative view of adapting the aggregate value is to to bring in whole bunch of values and have a bigger notion of what values are. So you incorporate all the values. I mean, the classic example would be the difference. You would have heard people talking about melting pot and the salad bowl. Would we want to uh, dissolve our individual identities and, and become one collective huge, uh, one collective entity like the soups, where all the in ingredients dissolve and it's all these nutrients are compounded together and form a single uh, nutritious, 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 or nutritious soup. Or the other hand, we become a salad bowl, where we all are putting together without losing our uh, individual identity, but our identities and our values complement each other. So that there's a unique. Uh, so there's always a tension between these two perspectives. I wouldn't be able to say which is better. 
uh, in Malaysian experiment, we have constantly tried to live in harmony with each other. But every now and then, when you flip the newspaper, suddenly you realize that the, the tomatoes want not to be part of the salad. And the sal uh, salad leaves, sorry. Or the onions want to be recognized as onions rather than being part of the salad. So you always hear this once in a while. The other argument would be if I, if I give up all my identity and, and somehow become part of the aggregate, then uh, the richness is lost. I mean, one great strength that any Malaysian can draw is we have, if we have to really write the narrative of Malaysia, we can draw strength from all parts of the world because historically we were formed from so many facets. Look at our dietary uh, uh, options. Anytime you walk into downtown Kuala Lumpur, you find the richness in our dietary choice. We have, we have Indian cuisine, Chinese cuisine, Thai cuisine, Malay cuisine, and you have uh, Indo Eurasian cuisines. So the variety can only be created because we have, we have held on to certain parts of an identity. Now, on the other hand, because we are holding on to identity, it occasionally crops up and causes tension. And how does the curriculum incorporate, or how does the curriculum uh, come up with a solution to, to, be, uh, to, have, uh, to be part of the solution for regardless of whichever perspective the curriculum decides to take? The question you should really be asking at this moment is how does your curriculum address cultural diversity and pluralism? Because this is really important. Eh? Pluralism talks about variation because you can have variation within even a homogeneous society. I'm sure if you go to Japan where they take Japan is one of the most um, monocultural society. But there will be pluralism in the sense that you have the liberal perspective, you have the conservative perspective, you have uh, people who are theologi theocratically or theologically embedded values that they want to see manifested in others. Then you have this very free thinker, liberal approach to things. You have the cosmopolitan thinkers, you have the cultural and the nationalistic thinkers. So you've got to incorporate no matter where you are. You have to incorporate this whole notion of diversity and pluralism in your curriculum. And the question is, how do you do this successfully? The challenge confronting educators is to develop a curriculum that is responsive to the student's diverse social cultural value, at the same time capable of creating a national identity based on core values and practice. It may be necessary to have different programs different pedagogical approach, flexible curriculum, and even varied educational environment to address the needs of all students. No society can afford to socially or economically marginalize any student and, um, any student, and the curriculum must nurture students to become active participants in a dynamic and emerging society. Uh, this is what Scone has talked about in extensively.